Thank you for tuning in. It's DeVille247. And today, we're going to talk about FAMU Spring Game 2022. But before we do that, subscribe to this channel because I'm going to have a lot of footage coming. Um, a lot of different footage. Not your regular footage. So, um, you know, from sports to anything you could think of, it's, it's, it's on my channel. But uh, today, we're going to talk about FAMU Spring Game. So make sure y'all subscribe. Hit that like button, follow, share all this content at DeVille247. Um, I'm sure you've seen one of my videos, but if you haven't, I'm going to go in depth with stats, um, vlogs, and everything this year. So I'm going to stay real busy. Uh, you know, COVID was going on the past two years, still going on. So it shut down a couple of events, but um, I'm back, back in the mix, back out. So today, like I said, we talk about FAMU's Spring Game 2022. And, um, you know, I, I like what I see out there on the field all together. I can say a lot of these HBCUs are doing a better job recruiting. Um, and, and instead of these schools showing shade to Coach Deion Sanders at Jackson State, I think a lot of these teams need to, um, you know, thank Coach Deion Sanders publicly. Or, or, you know, even privately, whatever. But I want to see it more publicly. Uh, I see in, the, in in our culture we can, you know, we, we throw a lot of shade, you know. Um, but And that comes with football. That comes with sports. But Coach Deion Sanders at Jackson State needs the recognition um, he deserves because a lot of teams like FAMU and Grambling State are reaping the benefits from Coach Deion Sanders bringing in top-level FBS transfers to the HBCU level. This has never been seen before, y'all. Never. So now these HBCUs are recruiting like like uh, Power 5 conferences now. I mean, not to that level yet, but they're they're getting there. And um, it's good to see, you know. Um, but today the focus is FAMU. I just wanted to throw that out there, get it out the way, because the rest of this... this uh, this video is about fam you and we're gonna keep it there so i was impressed with uh fam you um they are losing a few big pieces from last year's team um an nfl prospect in uh marquise bell uh, i believe he will get drafted um this year uh at safety so he was he was a hell of an athlete um, I saw him play in person when uh, Jackson State and, and Fam U played. Um, you know, I got some bad footage on there, but it wasn't a high-scoring game, so <laughs> I didn't I didn't uh, spend the time getting the footage. The, the score was only seven to six, so um, that was the what was the name of it? Orange Blossom Classic. So um, you can go back in my footage from last year. I actually drove. I'm gonna throw this in there. Twenty hours to go get that footage. I got to throw that in there. So uh, it's not like I caught a flight. I drove 20 hours to the game, um, 10 hours down, 10, 10 hours back. But uh, when, you know, I got there, I wanted to just focus on the bands because the game was seven to six. So I wasn't going to waste my time getting that footage. But uh, it was a close game, and, and people are looking forward to this year's rematch, you know, so... Um, you know, I think fam, you, you know, will have something to prove for this game, but, uh, they lost a few pieces last year. And, um, I mean, this year they're losing, uh, Marquise Bell and, uh, Savion Williams, who was a Tennessee transfer. So, um, you know, they, they have some pieces that they lost, but they also have a lot of returning talent. So today I'm going to get into the talent that they have returning and also some newcomers who are going to come in right away. Some of these FBS transfers that, that will help this team out right away. Um, you know, Coach Willie Simmons is doing an amazing job at, at, at FAMU. Um, they had that one year where they were out, um, that COVID year, two years ago. Um, but, I, I mean, I can imagine they were out there almost, you know, all the time practicing hard in that Florida heat. <laughs> You know, so um, I think this team will probably be well conditioned. Um, you know, living in Florida, uh, 
and, and watching athletes in Florida, I know they're very fast and well conditioned. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, so soon as the, the game started, I mean, I had my list of players I was watching and Coach Willie Simmons before the game, like, leading up to the game, he was talking about a few athletes in practice, you know, and I watched, I actually watched these tapes, y'all. I don't just sit here and, and write things down or just talk to y'all without doing my research. So I watched the tapes and, um, you know, I even watched the recruits that they brought in. I watched every recruit that I, I felt was worth watching. And, um, it was some players that didn't really jump out to me, you know, but that doesn't mean they aren't good. You know, they obviously have to be some type of good to get noticed by, by, uh, fam you, but, um, you know, Isaiah major really, uh, surprised me today. Like, I mean, not today, but the other day, <laughs> uh, but he surprised me. And, um, you know, coach Willis Simmons said, you know, you got to listen to these coaches because he said that Isaiah Major, um, you know, is pretty much all over the field on defense um, at linebacker. The second play of the game, I believe, or the second drive of the game, um, Isaiah Major actually picked off the quarterback. You know, um, like I said, he was all over the field. Um you know, and he almost took that interception to the house. He got stopped at the one yard line. Um, the Vanderbilt transfer, Jeremy Musa, he, you know, this guy has a hell of a arm, y'all. Let me let me tell you, he got a hell of a arm. Uh, he threw that pick. It was just, you know, his is one of his first drives. You know, maybe his first drive. Little nerves and everything. I get it. You know, he wants to prove himself. But um, Isaiah Major just cut in front of that the receiver and just intercepted that ball and took the ball all the way back to the one yard line. Um, I believe back at it in the JUCO level he used to play running back. So let me tell y'all, if Isaiah Major get that ball on the interception, he gonna take that ball back all the way. You know he's a, he's an athletic linebacker, so watch out for him. Um, you know he also had. With that interception, he had a couple tackles for loss, losses and um, a sack, you know. So it was hard to really get the numbers and the players because, you know, the announcers, they weren't really helping us out. You know, they weren't really giving us the, the actual numbers of the players. But I was able to find out some of the players who made these plays. Um, but it's okay. They were outside. You know, I, I get it. They have renovations going on at, at FAMU, so hats off to the to re, the reporters. You know, uh, they're out there in the wind <laughs> while while FAMU is doing nice renovations uh, to their stadium. So this is no shade to the reporters. It's just, you know, with the wind blowing and being outside, they probably couldn't, you know, hold the paper and, and look at the numbers and everything. So that's okay. But, um, I got got it for y'all. I'm gonna give y'all some names. Uh, Xavier Smith was was uh, the leading receiver from last year. Um, he actually had a long touchdown reception of 82 yards. Um, he just took it to the house. I mean, he he broke one defender and outran about three or four defenders to take it 82 yards. Um, you know. He, he he actually came back for his senior year. This guy could have went to pro day and tried to go pro, um, but he, he chose to come back. Um, let me give you some stats for him for last year. 713 yards last year. He averaged 11.1 yards per catch and 64.8 yards per game. He uh, stands 5'10", he's 170 pounds. But um, he was the team's leading receiver last year. I see these numbers going up this year with the return of, um, you know, the starting quarterback, Rashawn McKay. I, I feel like with him returning and Moses stepping in when he comes in, I know, I don't think, I know 
that Xavier Smith and these other receivers are going to have a big year. So the offense, we're going to go to the, you know, talk about the offense, then go to the defense. The running backs look good, y'all. They, they uh, bonded, graduated from last year's team, short running back, but he had 973 yards last year. Um, I see the this transfer running back from Georgia State, Destin Coates. I see him coming in, and, and I don't say he's going to get 1,000 yards this year, um, if not get the 973 yards that Bonnet got. And if he doesn't, the other running back, Terrell Jennings, um, I feel like he's good enough to to get, um, you know, the 900 yards as well. They're, they're loaded in that backfield. Um, they're loaded at receiver. So, you know, um, it was one play that stood out to me. I was waiting for Destin Coates to, to break one, you know. He had, he, um, he had an amazing stiff arm. On, uh, I don't know if it was a linebacker or a cornerback, whoever it was, he stiff armed the hell out that dude, and um, right from when he stiff armed him, he spun off and broke it for another fifteen or ten yards. So you know that gain itself, I, I think in total was about maybe a twenty yard gain, something like that. But uh, you know, I was just impressed by that run. So. He um he impressed me out there even in a little bit of time that I saw him, um he was impressive. Another player who impressed me, even though he he made a mistake on his first drive throwing that interception to Major. Look, Isaiah Major has something to prove at linebacker, being a JUCO transfer, two star rated prospect coming you know out of high school. Um, you know, he has something to prove. Uh, like I said, he, he played good. So I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to let uh, Musa have, you know, make he, he made a mistake. If you're going to make a mistake, make it during the spring game. Make it in practice. Just don't make it in the game. Get it out the way now. <laughs> you know, because when it's, it's the season, you want to make sure. You, you Look, he's going up against one of the top defenses in at the FCS level. Okay, and we're gonna get into that. But matter of fact, we're gonna get into it now. <laughs> He's going against one of the best defenses at the FCS level. Number 10 total defense in the FCS last year. I'm gonna say it again. The MU's defense was number 10 in total defense at the FCS level. So Musa and McKay, they're going against one of the best defenses at that level. So when when he makes a mistake, like I said, it's better to get it out the way with this defense. It's one of the best in the FCS than to give it away to a team like Jackson State or Grambling or any of these other teams um, in the conference or in the nation. So um, what I saw, you know, you got to keep in mind with the spring game. You got first string is playing, second string, third string. So the little bit of time that you have to watch players, it's, you know, you, you have to analyze the little bit of work that, that they're showing you. Look, Musa has an arm. <laughs> I'm going a, I'm to a say that. Um, I see why he's a three-star. I mean, in his first game at the JUCO level, he threw 600 yards in his first game. At JUCO level, so I know this this guy can can play. You know, I don't care what level you at. You throw six hundred yards, you know, people gonna watch you. So he transferred in from Vanderbilt. Um, you know, he needs needs to calm down a little bit in the pocket. But I think that was nerves from the first game. He can sling that ball, and he he runs well. You know, he's not just a you know. Pocket passer like they got him like a pro style quarterback. No, this guy, I feel like he's a dual threat. He can run it too. So um I saw some plays where he got out the pocket and ran. Um look y'all, fam, you got a, a good quarterback battle for this fall, these fall practices. And let me tell you, they got some good quarterbacks. Even look, even the third string and the fourth string quarterbacks were decent to me. I like some throws from them. So Coach Willie Simmons, man, 
<laughs> your people did a hell of a job recruiting quarterbacks. They have good quarterbacks back there. I mean, I seen the fourth stringer throw uh, the long touchdown, the 82-yard touchdown to uh, to Xavier Smith. Like I said, they got a good quarterback battle, but um, I foresee it being Rashawn McKay's job to lose. Uh, Musa being the second string, but it, it, it's gonna it's gonna be to the last. To, they're not gonna announce that starter until it's game day. You know, um, I feel you know that's just my thing. But uh, look, I look at it like this: Hey, you can have a two quarterback system, fam. You because both of these players can play. You know, um, McKay has shown he can get you nine wins. I like the talent from Musa who transferred from Vanderbilt, an SEC school. I don't care if it's at the lower level of an SEC school. It's still an SEC school. So he can can throw it. I see see why he was, um, you know, recruited. So like I said, he made a few mistakes. Um, you know, just I feel he was trying to prove himself. If he can calm it down during the season, I'm telling y'all, he can really throw it. He can throw that deep ball well. And, and, you know, besides Akil Glass from Alabama a &M, who's gone, who's another NFL prospect, uh, Shadour Sanders really surprised at Jackson State. He can throw it. But, uh, like I said, Musa, I see it on film. He can really throw it. So, when you have those type of quarterbacks in the swag, it's really going to, you know, it, it the swag is really missing that. You look at HBCUs, you look at, a lot of running quarterbacks, you know. But like I said, Shadour Sanders at Jackson State, um, Akil Glass at uh, who was at Alabama and then who's now an NFL prospect. And then these quarterbacks, Musa, he can throw it. So um, I, I feel like that's an advantage going into the fall. So um, another player on offense that that I was uh, really impressed with was uh, Travante Davis the transfer, wide receiver transfer from Wayne State. Let me tell y'all about him. So he he led his conference. He was tied first for the leading most receptions. And um, he led the league in receptions, but he was tied for the most yards. 686 yards. Um, he's a red shirt junior. 6'1", 205. Um, and he averaged 18.1 yards per catch last year at Wayne State. So, you know, it's a lower level of football, but uh, they play against some high-level competition in, at that level. Um, I believe, like, Ferris State teams like that who, you know, I believe, you know, they're, they're known. They win championships. So everybody knows teams like Ferris State at that level. Um, this guy's this he's a good player. Like I said, it's 6'1, 205. I feel like he can overpower some people uh, at the SWAC level. Um, even though he played at a lower level, it doesn't matter. He's he looked good out there. Um, you know, I feel like he's a player to watch on the offense. Um, you know, so he had uh I saw one touchdown. Um one 10 yard touchdown that he had over a rally who who coaches um coach Willie Simmons is real high on on Zaire Riley um uh, uh you know short defensive back from that area in um down there in Florida but uh he's high on him but uh Travante Travante Davis uh, number 13 he had a 10 yard touchdown over him and Travante is 6 foot 1 Whereas Zaire is five foot six, you know, so he's, you know, I feel like in the in the SWAC and FCS, you know, you're gonna have taller receivers who are going to get over top of him. But uh, like Coach said, you know, Zaire is a ball hawk, so hopefully he can get up there and, you know, I hope he jumps high. He looks like he 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 jumps a little high, <laughs> so he just wants the ball. But um, on that play, that touchdown, Javante Davis just. Went over him and caught the touchdown. And, um, you know, he will get tested a lot, like Coach Willie Simmons said. But, um, you know, they're high on Zaire. But on that play, Trevante Davis went over top of him, caught the ball, 
um, made him look small, you know. But uh, but uh, another uh, catch that Javante had, he had a long reception. Um, I don't know the yardage amount, but it might have been like 25, 30 yards, um, you know, on the right side of the field. The quarterback just threw it. And, um, you know, Travante Davis went up and got it over the defender. So it was a hell of a catch. Um, he looks good out there, man. I think he'll have a big year. I think all of these receivers will have a big year. Um, another another receiver to watch. He wasn't really too much active in the game today, but another player is Shareed. Uh, is it John Murray Shareed, if I'm pronouncing it right? He was uh, a third-team uh, FCS All-American by Stats Hero as a as a punt returner. So I don't know how the hell you're a third team <laughs> all American in the FCS when you lead the nation in the FCS and punt return yards. I whoever does the uh all American voting for these people, no knock against you, but uh how can you lead the nation in punt return yards and not be the number one uh, first team spent, uh, punt return. I'm sorry, but, you know, maybe, you know, I, I just feel like these swag players aren't getting the love, you know, the, the recognition that, that they should get. But it's, it's okay, you know. Um, I'm going to give him the recognition. I feel like he should have been first team and uh, All-American as a punt returner. He led the nation. And per return yards. Okay, so give y'all some stats. I give y'all stats. So he actually averaged 19.9 yards per punt that led the nation. So he was third team All American FCS by Stats um, Hero. Um, you know, but uh, like I said, 19.9 uh, yards per return punt return and on kick returns he he averaged 24.7 yards per return one touchdown on that uh, punt return he had 622 uh, receiving yards averaged 11.3 yards per catch had nine touchdowns and um, averaged 50 51.8 yards per game so like I said he's the most dangerous return in the nation to me um, like I said, he should have been a first team uh, All American, but I feel like he will be this year. The guy, guy's really fast. I saw him in person, and he had a good, good return in that uh, Jackson State game. Um, so, but yeah, he was, he was good. Uh, I didn't really see too much from him at the spring game, um, but that doesn't mean he he won't have a good year. He had a good catch that I saw in the highlights. Another player who I need to bring up. We've been on the offense. That's kind of it for the offense. Isaiah Land, the defensive end slash linebacker for FAMU, he was. Get ready for this, y'all. I need and, and before I get in there, I need y'all to hit that subscribe button because I'm going deep with these these stats. But uh, Isaiah Land, remember the name, Isaiah Land, defensive end slash linebacker for FAMU. He is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that FAMU had a number 10 total defense, uh, number 10 ranked defense in the nation at the FCS level. Um, this team, honestly, their defense can, can compete on the FBS level, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, you can have FBS schools that will struggle with their defense, just, just being honest. Um, their defense, I feel like, is what kept them in a lot of games last year and to win a lot of games, not knocking the offense. The offense is good, it's decent. But um, if you want to go defense versus the offense, their defense is better. Let, I'm just going to be clear on that. Um, you take it how you want, whatever. Stats don't lie. The defense was better. And um, like I said, Isaiah Land, hell of a player. Watch his highlights. He gets after it. I feel like at the next level, he's a little undersized, but that's okay. Uh, I feel like he, he'll he have the frame to, you know, get to whatever level an NFL team needs him to, to get to. Last year's Buck Buchanan Award winner 
which is given to the best defensive player in the FCS. Look, I'm telling y'all, these SWAT players are really showing y'all they're really good. They're getting the recognition they deserve now. Instead of them throwing shade at Coach Deion Sanders at Jackson State, it's putting a little light on the talent at the HBCU level. You know, keep in mind, Coach Deion Sanders like one of my videos, you know, when I went to Jackson State and, and did the video on film, he liked my footage. So thanks, Coach Deion Sanders. But uh, like I said, it's about FAMU today. But, um, you know, I just want to say that's putting a light on the talent here at the, at the uh, HBCU level. So, um, you know, Isaiah Land, like I said, the, the linebacker slash defensive end was the best defensive player in the nation last year. Um, he led the nation in sacks and, and uh, tackles for losses. So um, he was first team stats All-American. Uh, he had 43 tackles, 25.5 um, tackles for losses. Like, Y'all understand what that stat line. Like, look at this. 43 tackles with 25.5 tackles for losses, which means you break that down. Let's, let's break that down. That's over half of his tackles that he made were tackles for losses. So he gets behind the, 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 the line of scrimmage to get most of his tackles. That's amazing right there. He led the nation. He also led him in sacks. Like I said, 19 sacks a game, y'all. Um, that's that's amazing. I don't care what level you're on, 19 sacks a game. That's good. Uh, three forced fumbles, six quarterback hurries, and three pass breakups. With the 25.5 tackles for losses, 19 sacks, um, you know, the, the three forced fumbles, six quarterback hurries and three pass breakups with 43 tackles. This this Isaiah Land is the truth. He will be a, a, an NFL pick next year. <laughs> I can I can guarantee that if, if a team overlooks him, then it's a problem, but he's a hell of a player. He was out for the spring game, but uh like I said the defense still looks good. Um I'm gonna give the the uh, best defensive player of the game to me was Isaiah Major with that. Uh, he had, like I said, that interception linebacker Isaiah Major, the transfer, the JUCO transfer, who was a two star. He has a lot to prove, y'all. And even Coach Willie Simmons said he's he's everywhere. So uh, I believe him. <laughs> He, he showed me, you know, I, I look at the film. When I look at film and highlights, I want to see players that stand out to me. I know that these players are going to be good during the season because when it, when the lights are on, these players come to play. So Isaiah uh, Major is the truth. He was the best player on defense. And uh, my best player on offense was uh, Xavier Smith. Even though I'm going to say Trevante Davis he had a good performance too, made some good catches. He it could have easily been him too. Um, but with Xavier Smith breaking that 82 yarder, that, that was to me the play of the game. Um that and the interception. So the interception from Isaiah Major on defense where he took the ball all the way, got stopped at the one yard line. Musa could have let him go, but he he pushed him out at the one yard line. So um, that says a lot about Musa too. He's not just going to let you run into the end zone and give up on a play. So he pushed uh, Isaiah Major out at the one-yard line. But, uh, you know, uh, like I said, best player of the game, Isaiah Major on defense. And my offensive player of the game was Xavier Smith, the team-leading uh, receiver. So look out for FAMU. Um, they were, were – uh, they're coming off of two straight nine-win seasons. Um, they were nine and three last year. Went to the uh, – it was their first FCS playoff curve ever. Um, you know, and they finished the season ranked 25th nationally. Um, so – and it was said that they had the number one HBCU ranking at the end of the year. 
Um, but I, I don't know how that can be if you didn't play in the the celebration bowl. But that's what the stat said. So I'm just read it to y'all. It said they were 25th um, in the final FCS poll and were ranked. They were ranked the number one HBCU team at the end of the season. So um, they lost to Jackson State, which I was there. Got some of the band footage, um, and I actually was there. So. Um, and that's in my history. You can go down, check my old videos. I got the band, y'all, up close. You know, got the band. Up close. Real up close. But uh, <laughs> check it out. But, uh, yeah, so they got a lot to build on and, and come from last year. They got a lot of returners, a lot of transfers with a lot of experience. So I'm going to get into some of the players on the team. Um, let's see, and some of the stats. So they were ranked 18th in uh, sacks allowed with only 14 on the season. So that shows you that FAMU does a good job recruiting offensive linemen. Um, they had a few transfers come in, and they have some more coming in this year. So I just think, you know, Coach Simmons and the, and the recruiting team, you know, they're doing, the coordinators, they're doing a good job bringing in players. They know how to recruit. Um, so this year, they brought in a lineman. He's actually from, from Florida State. Uh, his name is Jalen Goss. Um, even though I didn't, you know, see anything from the, the scrimmage um, from these players, uh, I will say, I saw his highlights from his high school highlight from a high school that's known for winning. One of the best, you know, programs um, in Georgia history for high school programs. It's a, a program called Lowndes. Um, and they do they do a real good job every year and, have, you know, have a history of winning championships. So I watched his highlights. He has a lot of pancake blocks. The guy is 6'7", 290 pounds. Um, real big, and, and I feel like he'll put on more weight at um, FAMU. Like I said, he's a Florida State transfer, uh, so you know he can play. This guy was recruited by Auburn, Michigan, Florida, Miami. Um, he was recruited by uh, a lot of lot of schools, so, um, you know, he must be good if they offered him. Him blocking, I feel like getting a lot of pancake blocks, I feel like uh, Dustin Coates and Terrell Jennings will, you know, get get major yards, you know. And then they, like I said, they look good out there uh, at the spring game. So I don't see that changing. The score ended up being 28-10. to 10. The Orange team wins uh, the spring game for FAMU. There was uh, no official count of the fan attendance. But FAMU Athletics stated that there were nearly 10,000 attendees um, at the spring game. So nearly 10,000. That's still a good turnout um, in its good environment for the spring, even through the highlights I watched and the uh, video I watched because I watched some of it live. I could see the fans into it, you know, in the, in the crowd, you know, doing their uh sorority dances and I heard the DJ in the background you know the environment was good you know even on a little windy day and almost went down there y'all so that would have been some good footage um, but it's okay this this fall coming I'm gonna stay active weekly I'm gonna be at these games weekly y'all so stay tuned subscribe